Psalm 19, and we'll read verses 7 through 11, where it says, The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous altogether. The two previous messages were entitled The Preamble, A New National God, and Article 6, A New National Law. This message is entitled Amendment 1, A New National Religion. Amendment 1 reads, quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances, end of quote. There is no article or amendment in the entire Constitution and its amendments that Christians defend and promote more than Amendment 1. Whereas Christians are almost silent on Article 6, and for good reason, um, Amendment 1 is where they really... um, where they really camp themselves. Christians hang, in fact, their religious hat on Amendment 1 as if some great Christian principle is to be found therein. And they will defend it. I mean, if it's one thing to attack the Constitution. It's another thing to attack Amendment 1. Um, but they, they hang their hat on that, that this amendment, again, as if there's some great Christian principle to be found therein, when in fact, when we, when we evaluate this thing with what we should be evaluating it with, when in fact Amendment 1 is very possibly the most ungodly, anti-God, anti-Yahweh, that is, an unchristian aspect of the entire document and which demonstrates just how brainwashed American Christians are regarding this document. And I think if you haven't already seen this about Amendment 1, I think when we get finished, you're going to see that. It really reveals what a job has been done on Americans, and particularly Christian Americans. Now now that you have hopefully begun to internalize, personally internalize Psalms 19, 7 through 9, where we started with the first message... And as a result, are now assessing everything by Yahweh's perfect law and altogether righteous judgments. Let me read Amendment 1 again and see if you cannot discern, based upon that, the, the premise of Yahweh's law is the standard. See if you cannot discern the ungodliness, in fact, sedition against Yahweh that is found therein. Amendment 1 again. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or or press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for the redress of grievances. Did you catch it? Can someone tell me the phrase, um, when viewed in light of Yahweh's law that is inherently wicked in Amendment 1? It's the phrase known as the free exercise clause. That is the phrase, now think about this, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Christians have gotten so caught up, and I think this is is one of the principal reasons why they haven't been able to see this. Not the only reason, but certainly one of the principal reasons. Christians have got so caught up in the battle with groups like the ACLU over the misuse of the Establishment Clause, that is, the freedom from religion, found in Amendment... Well, that's not found in Amendment 1, but that's the abuse of it, the freedom from religion, that they have overlooked entirely the ungodliness innate in the Free Exercise Clause, that is, the tolerance and thereby promotion of polytheism. That is the worship and the proliferation of any and all gods under the First Amendment's banner. 
and the free exercise thereof. Which is a clear and unequivocal violation of what? The first commandment. The very first commandment. The first commandment is explicit. And particularly when you add its judgments to it. Is explicit that in that it declares that thou shalt have no other gods other than Yahweh. Besides him. Whereas amendment one allows for all other gods. Besides Yahweh. Thereby establishing polytheism as the nation's new national religion, thereby supplanting the Christian monotheism of the 17th century colonial America. And because genuine Christianity is monotheistic, genuine Christianity is monotheistic and therefore intolerant, yes, intolerant of all other gods and the religions attached thereto, John 14, 6, Acts 4, 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 6 through 18, 2 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 11, etc. And we could add several probably more to that from the New Testament alone. And because genuine Christianity is monotheistic and therefore intolerant um, of all other gods and religions, has for all practical purposes... Um, the First Amendment, um, the First Amendment has eliminated, um, or thereby, because genuine Christianity is monotheistic rather than polytheistic. Make sure that we're flowing here, um, because that is the case for all practical purposes. The First Amendment has therefore eliminated Christendom. D-O-M, not D-U-M-B. They don't have any problem with D-U-M-B. <laughs> um, they embrace Christian D-U-M-B. But has all, for all practical purposes, eliminated Christendom, D-O-M, as one of the constitutional republics allowed religions. And you think, well, uh, we're able to function out here. Well, you're able to function within the four walls of your church building um, and maybe in your homes, but... They're even starting to infiltrate that. In fact, they've taken over control of most of the churches in America with their 501c3 tax exempt, exempt status, incorporating the church so that the government is now head of the church instead of Christ. Just one means by way that's do this. But this explains, uh, I hope it helps to explain why Christianity, particularly Christendom, that is any Christian not content to remain with his religion within the four walls of their church buildings, is, think about this, the government's religion of choice when it comes to persecution. Have you ever wondered why the government, you know, they got lots of religions out there to choose from, why the government has singled out Christianity for persecution? Well, you may not yet put, the, put it all together, but you now know why. As a polytheistic nation, the Constitutional Republic cannot permit genuine Christendom, that is, salty, dominion-minded, and intolerant Christians, as compared to merely Christianity or churchianity, that is, saltless Christianity, good for nothing but to be trampled under the foot of man, which is exactly what they're doing, to exist, let alone to thrive in its midst as it previously had in pre-constitutional Puritan America. Any more than ancient Rome, ancient polytheistic Rome, could permit Christendom to exist in their day and age. In fact, the U.S. Constitutional Republic is essentially uh, a resurrection of the first century Roman Republic. Remember, even the, even the Federalists, and Anti-Federalists a lot, their, their pseudonames that they wrote under were taken from, there were Roman names, Plubius and others. Um, and it is a resurrection. 
very much so a resurrection of first century polytheistic Roman Republic, which while allowing other polytheistic religions to flourish, other polytheistic religions to flourish, persecuted monotheistic Christianity with singular vehemence. The same as is occurring today, not nearly to the same extent, but the same that is occurring today, and it will only get worse, in modern polytheistic America. Thanks. Amendment 1 of the United States Constitution, and which, again, will only get worse unless Christians, American Christians wake up to the fact that the framers did not provide us with a biblical and Christian document, but one which is antithetical and even hostile to Yahweh, his kingdom, his laws, and his morality, and to us as Christians. And the greatest what I think is the greatest travesty in all of this is that, and I've got to put quotes around it, but that quote-unquote fundamental, quote-unquote conservative Christianity is the biggest supporter of the Constitution, and in particular, Amendment 1. But how has this occurred that, that Christians view freedom of religion an indisputable violation of the first commandment as a wonderful thing. It's one thing to tolerate, but they've gone even beyond toleration. They view it as a wonderful thing. When in fact it is an abhorrent thing, at least to Yahweh, and therefore should be to us as well. Without a common faith, and therefore a common law, it is, it is impossible for people of diverse religions, particularly Christian and non-Christian, religions to walk in agreement. In fact, Yahweh explicitly forbids his people from doing so. Turn over to Exodus chapter 34, if you will, please. Exodus 34 and verses 12 through 14. Verse 12, where it says, Take heed to thyself, lest thou t make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a for a snare in the midst of thee. Boy, do we have snares in the midst of us. And if we'd only taken this warning to heart, it wouldn't be so. Take heed to thyself that thou make no covenant with the inhabitants of land, whither thou goest, lest it be a snare in thy midst of thee, but ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves, not tolerate them and let them erect them. For thou shalt worship no other god, for Yahweh, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. The First Amendment is a covenant of the type expressly forbidden by Yahweh, right there. Now listen to me before I read this. Some generation is going to finally wake up and start reversing the cycle. But you know what? We can be that first generation that begins to do so. And I believe that God is providing this information that we have been discussing this weekend as the means for us, if we'll only be faithful to Him, to start seeing it happen. I believe it begins here and now with us. Mm -hmm.